Hello and welcome to the September edition of Cycling Weekly's Tech of the Month, where again, we've got three great products to show you from our month of testing various bits. Um, but I'm gonna go first, and I've got something that is looking into the future. So I'm basically gonna go take on and fly a Apache helicopter. Wow. Wow, look at those. So these are my new sunnies. Yeah, okay. And these are from a brand called Every Sight, and they are just a set of sunglasses. Looks to be a bit more than just a set of sunglasses though, yeah. doesn't it? So these, yes, as I say, these are from an Israeli company. Um, it started in 2004 and developed sort of military wear for the Israeli military. And so these are a set of sunglasses that have a heads up display. Uh, wow. So a company called Every Sight, and these are called the Raptors. The Raptors. They're on currently, and I can see the time. I got battery life at the moment, and you can swipe. So you basically got a little thing there. He's put me in his uh, <laughs> yeah, crosshairs the cross right hairs. now. There's a red light going on. Yeah, what's that red light in the middle of my forehead? <laughs> <laughs> so you can work through the settings, uh, and you can pair it with your phone, and they basically can uh, give you all your eye data. They can pair with third party uh, devices like your power meter, heart oh, okay. rate, um, cadence sensor, speed sensor, etc. They've got GPS um, built in. So, mapping, turn by turn mapping on your heads up display uh, is actually really weird and it's, it's something you need to get used to because it's kind of moving your focus to focus on the screen. So, really it's, not, close it's to you. not the whole screen, it's though. not the whole screen. Oh, okay. It's Rupert's now engrossed in changing the settings. So you change the settings by your right hand on your right temple, there's a little slider. Um, oh, it makes, just noise. it makes noises. So this device, um, as Rupert is discovering well, the, the here. The technophobe is having a go at this. <laughs> he can't get it to work. Can take pictures and video whilst you're riding, so real time stuff um, with the slide of your hand. Yep. There's a couple of options with the Raptors. Um, you can get 16 internal uh, gigabytes or 32. Um, so there's options actually quite a lot of storage there. Um, I mean, video will fill it up pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, but over Wi-Fi, you can... Took a photo. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this is why you always, it's like a bunch of children, always tell them before you give them the exciting product. Oh, no, no, I'm recorded. Pairing with your phone and the uh, Every Sight app, um, you can download that to your phone straight away and then delete all the contents on wow. the actual oh, cool. uh, oh, memory Or you can upload stuff if you want to upload yep. it as well. And then so. firmware updates, etc. And um, with the trackpad on the side, I'm gonna put these back on again. They look really good, they look really good on you, yeah. yeah. I mean, no, let's not beat around the bush. They, they're not the best looking pair they're quite of big. glasses. Um, you know, it looks like I've got a very stern monobrow going on. So I suppose the, the question you kind of have to ask is why go for something like that over your normal GPS? You know. Well, this, you know, as I it's said... it's beamed straight into your eyes, James. <laughs> Are you an idiot? <laughs> Go said, on, obviously. This is very early technology, uh, and it's, it's not something that the everyday cyclist is going to use. Uh, it's probably not something I would choose to use um, over a GPS in front of your computer. But is this something where technology can get so small and sort of insignificant in terms of processing and power, etc., to have on your face that you would just have this you know, as you're cycling along. Yeah. Technology is, is very good. Um, you know, they are a bit bulky uh, and they do look a bit funny compared to 100% I suppose when you've got, you got a helmet on though, it kind of wouldn't look so bad, would no. it? No, no, no. Build this into a visor on a helmet. Oh yeah, the time well, trial. Well this is, you know, yeah. where the technology could be going and where it could fit, you know. Mm. You know, time trialing is when you're going flat out, sometimes it's quite hard and you've got people mounting them on their tri bars, etc., to do that. Um, you know, these are similar life, uh, battery life compared to a computer, eight hours runtime um, with this, which is not too bad. And you can charge it by a little port uh, just in this ear cool. here. Just to think that you can get that into a pair of sunglasses yeah. at, like, at this stage, yeah. you know, thinking five years ahead down the line, like what, what other techno technological advances are we able yeah. to achieve? Uh, and I think that's quite exciting. Not something per se that everyone will be using now, um, but you know, bring in the e-bike market and can you connect it to your bike and you can see battery levels through your head-up display. You know, there's other sort of avenues you can think of where this comes into. Um, the only stumbling block at the moment is 
potentially the price. Um, I suppose tech, new tech. Brand new tech. On. How much? Uh, six hundred and forty-nine pounds up to six hundred and ninety-nine pounds. Okay. So that's uh, a heap of money. It's quite a lot of money um, for a pair of sunglasses, even though they make you look like that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, but you you know you save money. You don't have to buy a GPS and a pair of sunglasses. Yes. So you're just joining those together. So that makes it a bit easier to swallow. So yeah, that's the Every Sight Raptor glasses, which I think are going to make a huge impact in the cycling market. Maybe not now certainly in the future. So I've brought a pair of bike lights uh, because it is September, after all. The nights are drawing in. They are, they drawing are in. sadly drawing in. Winter is well on its way. It's coming. That does make us all feel very sad to say that. Yeah. So I've brought a pair of uh, bike lights from Light in Motion. So these are very good bike lights. You really like these I'm bike lights. I'm a big lights. fan of these bike lights. Uh, and yeah, these are a really interesting pair. Light in Motion are a really interesting company. They've been doing some really cool stuff. We featured couple of their lights last winter potentially um, and they had lots of technology to help you in traffic and they're just a brand that is kind of innovating in the bike like area which is uh, really cool to see really yeah. exciting uh, and this is the urban 1000 commuter combo mm. wow 1000 that's the front light that's a thousand lumens that's a lot of lumens. and that is a lot of lumens to have in on the road yeah. keeping you safe mm. um, but it's not just a thousand lumens, it's got different settings. So uh, yeah. it's like a thousand, uh, 500, 250, and then it's got a pulse mode as well, uh, which is 250 lumens. Uh, and then actually, it's not just a front light, it's got these two little orange side lights okay. as well, uh, which let you be seen from the side. So if you're at a T junction or something, this could be pointing straight on. Yep. And the cars coming from this direction will see these lights because these are quite bright as well. Okay. Um, and I mean, they're, no, they're nothing compared to the front light, but they're enough to be seen. You would see those orange yes. lights. It's uh, six hours runtime in the lowest setting, and a one and a half hour runtime in the highest setting. Um, so that would obviously thousand lumens will burn through the battery pretty quickly, but yep. you don't need it on all the time. Charge time. Charge time is about six hours, it says. Um, okay. Micro USB uh, just pops in there. So then on the back of your bike, you'd have this, the Viz 180 Pro from Light in Motion. Uh, and this is a 180 lumen rear light, which is pretty bright. For that a is a lot light. for a rear yeah, light. Yeah, rear lights are rarely that powerful. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's got a little pivot lock here, so you can mount it in lots of different places uh, on so the you bike. Can, not just on the seat posts. So exactly. if you're going bike packing, you can put it on your stays, put it anywhere exactly. you want, right? Exactly, James Bracey, genius. So for the pair of these lights, you would pay 149 pounds. If you're gonna take your riding seriously in winter, uh, then- If you just want one set to do everything yeah. you need on the road, um, you know, my commute that I did this morning yeah. for the first time in a long been time. been talking about this non-stop. <laughs> <laughs> Loves this commute now, don't you? Know, you? 47k, one way, yeah, all That's the way back as well. Big day, that is. That is a big, big, big day. But you want a set of lights that will take you through some country lanes, yeah. as my commute does. Uh, and then once you're into the city, then you can just yeah. take it back a bit. Same Getting a decent pair of lights is very important. And these are a decent pair of lights. Nice one. Thank you, Rupert. Yeah. Um, James, you've kind of brought... <clears throat> I don't know, what, your garage with you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it looks like I've actually brought uh, a lot of different things. Yeah. Um, oh, you have. Well, if we look at the turbo train, that's the important thing here. That's the first thing we're looking at. So, All right, so who, who are these? People? So Wahoo, obviously, you know, Love Wahoo. Pretty, pretty big in the, uh, in the indoor trainer circuit. And Wahoo have got a new turbo trainer. Okay, so this is the new Kicker Core Power Turbo. So, so that's their middle of the range. Yeah, so you know the kicker, the, that's the one that everyone, you guys have really, really liked that, really rate that. This is a kind of slimmed down, slightly more reasonably priced version. So it doesn't quite have exactly the same functionality. So it's a slightly lighter flywheel, doesn't have the maximum resistance of the, of the kicker, um, but it's still a smart trainer. Mm -hmm. So plug it in, you can attach it to Zwift, obviously, as everyone does, and it will do everything. So change the resistance and do everything here. So basically, Wahoo have got now a, a whole new set of kit to make your riding as realistic as riding outside. So not only do we have the turbo trainers, we also have what they call the headwinds and the climb. The so famous climb. The famous climb. climb. We've climb. been waiting for that yeah. for a while, yes. haven't we? 
So this basically attaches to your fork and that sticks in front. And what you can do is you can change the way the bike is oriented. So you can want to come to a climb this will move up and down so it lifts the so bike. So it does it automatically. And, so yeah. as you say, Zwift would come to a climb yep. in Watopia, shall we say, Absolutely. or on the new World Champs course yep. that they just released. The front end would start lifting, start raising up. It, depending on the gradient of the climb, exactly. up and down. And it'll do up to something like a 16 degree gradient. So yeah, you can <laughs> point so at the ceiling, point <laughs> <at> the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> like you're actually fired out of your room. It's crazy, it's crazy. But yeah, and, and the great thing about the, the new sort of setup is it's compatible with all new styles of bikes as well. So we've got through axle, quick release, uh, even mountain bikes as well. Wow. So you can use wow. it for all of those things. It's all smart so it does obviously connect together so once you've got it all paired up it will work really really well absolutely bang on yeah. so the only thing to note is obviously the kicker climb and the kicker headwind only works for the newest of wahoo's turbos right. so you need to make sure that you either go on the website just to see whether or not your turbo is actually going to be compatible with this well the headwind right just it's just yeah fan, right? can we yeah. talk about well, the headwind it just blows air at you right it does but it's smart air, okay? So uh, it's, nice. it's, it's a fully connectable smart fan. So rather than like using your 20 quid IKEA fan to blow air in your general direction, this is designed, first of all, to blow the air in a shape that's specific to a cyclist riding a bike. Right. Not sure exactly how they do that, but Does it's kind of... Does wind come at you in a cycling specific shape it does from the headwinds apparently so it gets you so, from head to toe basically. so basically head to toe and it's uh, a, like, almost like a column of air so there's no sort of like loss of air so all of that power comes to you itself but the great thing with it is you know when you sort of start your turbo sessions you don't really want to be blasted with like sort of 30 could be mile quite chilly. I, yeah. yeah i've been chilly as i start when like because you know you're going to get a super yeah. hot yeah um so i've had the fan on blast yeah. Yeah. um so it's good that it starts well, so, yeah, low, low. so it's, you've got a couple of different options. It's Bluetooth compatible, obviously, so you can have an app for your fan on your phone and you can adjust it like that. But really, the clever thing is it connects to your heart rate monitor or the turbo trainer itself. And so, therefore, depending on your heart rate and the speed you're going, it pumps out more air. <laughs> heart rate, it's like 210 beats a minute. The fans are like, oh, God, <laughs> cool them down, cool them down. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. It, it will basically do that. So the more you require, you don't have to actually touch it. It will do it automatically for you, wow. which is pretty cool. That is cool, actually. Yeah, yeah. That is really cool. Price-wise, what are we looking at here? It's probably going to be the one thing that maybe will put people off, or it, it's an investment, really. So... The turbo trainer is cheaper than the standard kicker, so this is six hundred ninety nine ninety nine. Okay. But that's a fully smart turbo trainer does everything for you. So in line with a lot of the other middle of the yeah, road. Yeah, it's pretty pretty smart. bang on actually, yeah. isn't it? In terms of that, uh, the climb unit four hundred ninety nine ninety nine. Okay. Fan is one hundred ninety nine ninety nine. So we're looking around about fourteen hundred quid altogether. Yeah. But I said if you're somebody that really and does then the room to, to fit it out in. Yes. Yes, yeah. unless you live in London, most of us do have space in our houses for... Uh, I don't know what that means. No, I don't know what that exactly. Means. So, yeah, uh, it is the one thing that you, you would effectively... I think you said earlier that you need a dedicated space for this, yeah. wouldn't you? Kind of like the every site glasses. This is the top of the tree, isn't it? When it comes to indoor training, this is kind of... It's getting the, there, yeah. This is really... If you want that full immersion... Yeah, like, that, that you've got to love indoor training. Yeah. Well, people do. And yeah. people, I mean, and then this does symbolise that indoor training is kind of, and it's its own, so it's a complete own entity yeah. now, isn't yeah. it? Like it's, yeah. it's almost separate to bike riding. There's loads of races and things now, yeah. and everything. It's actually sort of, I, no, I enjoy it. Thanks, guys. That was three futuristic products. It was there. really futuristic. Um, but we are going to go slightly back in time with some old school materials from Rupert Radley. And, a uh, misconception. That, and he's specialised alloy. Yes. Okay, so the alloy is aluminium. But that is a misconception that it's old school. Because there are loads of bike brands doing really cool things with aluminium. This is specialised alloy sprint. Um, so it is a crit racing bike. Yeah. That has had a bit of resurgence lately. It uses something called Deluzio Smart World. Yes. Now, James. Yeah. What is Deluzio Smart World? Wow, it's a kind of, it's a new way 
of weld in aluminium to create the strongest join they can. Uh, it's really simple to explain. So if you imagine rather than normally they would weld like a flat, flat piece against a flat piece and then put like weld around it. Well, with this, what they do is the tubes are rolled. So at the end, it creates a valley between them. So it gives you more space to put more welding material on. So it creates a stronger join for very little weight. There you go. Yeah. Listen to that. That was very well explained. That was I think very that's probably well the best yeah. explanation of something that we've I ever so. done Absolutely. So. on Tech of the Month. That Good. was great. Um, so this bike is what? How much? 1,600 quid. That is cheap as In chips. this build, so that's 105 uh, with DT Swiss wheels and specialised turbo tyres. And you loved riding this bike, I love this bike, it's a really good frame. It's really stiff, but it's compliant and it felt fast. And uh, yeah, it's great. We gave it, we get, I gave it a 9 out of 10. So, so basically everything you want from, yeah, an, from an aluminium, aluminium bike. bike without the price tag of a carbon fibre one. So it's kind of like a, almost like an alternative to the tarmac to a carbon bike, isn't it? Because often like the alley was the entry level range. Yeah. And then once you've gone past that, you kind of automatically went into tarmac territory. Exactly. So this is kind of well, like... That, that idea that people think that they should just get a carbon bike because everyone has a carbon bike and carbon bikes are meant to be the performance bikes. But this kind of stops that myth. And it's the same with like, Bikes like the Cannondale Cad 12, uh, mm -hmm. superb aluminium bikes. Yeah. Trek have just launched an aluminium Amanda, haven't they? they have, yeah. um, so a lot of brands are doing this mm -hmm. now because they, they've reached a point where they know what they can do with aluminium. Whereas when carbon first came in, everyone jumped on the carbon bandwagon and aluminium kind of slowed down a little bit. Yeah. But the technology is there now uh, and it's really cool. So this is also available as a frame only and you can build this up yourself. Um, and as of very recently, it's also available as a full build with disc brakes as well. Yeah. And this is a uh, fact carbon fork as well. Okay, so full carbon. Yeah, this is the same fork that is used on the tarmac. So oh. there you go. Sweet. Yeah. Cool. All right then, thanks guys. Well, that concludes Bike of the Month and Tech of the Month. Do like and subscribe our YouTube channel. But until then, we'll see you next time. You can't use that. <laughs> Apps and games. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ, mate, what's going on? This is music. Are you just, are you playing Mario? I'm Troy McClure. Yeah. Go! Come on, Sly! Go? <laughs> <laughs> right, come on, we've got to take it to I wanna play, he's going there. <laughs>